let me go to our IT expert. <laughs> I mean, uh, data analyst uh, who's been running the AAC website. It's a pleasure having you again. You. Let's look at the level of uh, computer literacy. I mean, how, how, based on your work with AAC in the IT department, um, how have people reached out in terms of support towards uh, the programs and manifestos of the African Action Congress? Oh, thank you very much. Um, I'm glad you asked that question uh, because it gives me an opportunity to expand on something I've uh, been rudely awakened to in the last uh, 12 months. Um, let me give you a little bit of history before I delve into that. I played the brief about that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm political. In 2006, I was rudely uh, I, I awakened by two white ladies who came to knock on my door asking me to vote for Barack Hussein Obama. Obama. Before then, I was like, uh, I'm a Hillary person. What's this black guy going to do? <laughs> two white ladies came and knocked on my door. I told them, oh, I'm voting anyway. They said, no, we're here to ask you to vote for Obama. I got off my couch then, and I walked my ass off for Obama. Oh. When Dr. Malcolm, thank you again for everything you've done. Uh, when the idea of Take It Back began to gestate, I was lukewarm. I've not shown that for a long time, but I was lukewarm. When we first made the appearance when Shawore came on and we saw Nigerians step up and rally behind Nigerians, I was really aware because I've always been told that Nigerians don't do anything for free or out of conviction. Hmm. That Nigerians would not do politics unless you actually pay them to do politics. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've been conditioned to believe that. I was awake and I've been a take back since. When we started looking at the technology platform, the things that we could do uh, to transform politics in Nigeria, we reached out to Nigerians. Everything you've seen so far, everything you see, we take it back. We built by hand and they were built by Nigerians. We did not outsource any part of this infrastructure to any Indian or Chinese or Vietnamese. Almost three decades in the IT field, I've been based in Silicon Valley for a very long time. Uh, one of the reasons why I am angry, I am an angry Nigerian. I'm angry because I could see for myself the incredible things, the incredible output in the technological field coming out of this God forsaken Nigeria. Made <clears throat> by this never do well inconsequential Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Created in spite of the deprivation. And it boils me, it rises me up. And I'm asking myself, in spite of all of this deprivation, in spite of the lack of infrastructure, in spite of all of the things that uh, these guys face, that our people face, if they can produce this, imagine if we can just give them a little bit of uplifting. Okay. Yeah. Just a tiny bit of uh, um, encouragement, facilitation. India has nothing on Nigeria. Okay. And I'm not telling you this as just as a Nigerian. I'm telling you this on the realistic evaluation and estimation from the heart of Silicon Valley. Everybody knows the capabilities and they acknowledge the abilities of Nigerians in my space over there. I am angry because our ruler or misrulers and mal administrators had opportunities. Most of the people running this country down were educated 
externally. Hmm. They lived in other countries. They have been benefiting from the labor of people over there. As much as I have also benefited. They see how things are run, how things are done, what makes the country thrive and successful, what builds a society. And they espouse these lofty ideas of how they could replicate the same thing. Uh, but they come back to Nigeria and it is like as soon as they land at the Morita Lamoya airport or wherever they land, something switches in them and they become a different person. That buzzed me up. I speak to you, um, Nigerians in the IT field. This is all I know, this is what I do. Uh, believe in the possible. Right now, you are severely limited. Right now, you are thinking of your options, you're looking at Accra. You are looking at Kigali. You are looking at Nairobi. You're considering taking your business and going out to the UK to take advantage of all the opportunities there. I am begging you, don't do that. You have a choice. We can build this country together. These people have nothing on us. There is nothing wrong with Nigeria that cannot be fixed by Nigerians. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wonderful analysis. Caller, I'm coming to you. I really love to take everybody's comment, at least each comment, before we go on a break. Caller, you've been on the campaign train. What do you see in the faces of young Nigerians as you go from door to door, from street to street, from village to village? What do you see? Well, um, thank you so much uh, once again. Just like Didi just said, he's an angry Nigerian. I am more angry than anybody sitting here today because I've been here, I've moved around, I've seen the pain that people are going through out there. A lot of Nigerians out there are ready to excel. But our leaders, and I call these wicked leaders, have not given these people the opportunity to excel. If the opportunity, the right opportunity is given to Nigerians, we're going to excel. We're going to do far beyond our goal. And I believe help is on the way. Help is so, so on the way. And we're very, very close to it. And I just want to tell Nigerians watching us all over the world to please bear with us. Because the help that you're looking for out there it's already right there mm. at your doorstep. Mm. That's right. It's time vote. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, right. When Shore told me he was running for office, he's going to be running for office, I was so excited. And I said to him, I'm going to do whatever it takes within my capacity, within my power, to put in whatever I can do. And I'm not doing this for Shore alone. I'm doing it for my country, Nigeria. I'm doing it for Africa. I'm doing it for the woman race. I'm doing it for the black race. You know, That's Nigeria right. has suffered so, so much, you know, and I think it's our time for us to step up. And I see that the youths are waking up. The younger people are waking up. The older people out there, they are waking up. And together, we're going to lead this country forward. We're going to move this country forward. Um, I was recently in Ghana with Shurore and Pipes. I was almost crying. Because I looked at Ghana, you know, I was like, what have we offended in this country? <laughs> what have we done wrong in this country? <laughs> Just look at Ghana. You know, I was so, I've never been to Ghana before. That was my first time in Ghana. Just immediately as soon as the plane landed, I was asking Pius, is this Ghana? Like, what is wrong with us? And a lot of people are so eager to take pictures, to send it back home. People are taking video. I mean, we also did, you know. But I was like, I was thrilled I was there. I was just being a little bit dramatic and I was so emotional because I was like, just Ghana, just a few miles away from us, Ghana. Like, what the hell is wrong with Nigeria? We need to step up. We need to step up. And for us to step up in this country, 
the youth needs to take over. Yes, yes. that's right. The youth need to take over. And our current leaders and our past leaders, they've gotten to their limits. They've done that's their right. best. Even though their best is not good enough, but we appreciate them. It's time for them to step aside. Mm -hmm. Let's take over. Let's teach them how to govern a country. Let's teach them how to lead a nation. Mm -hmm. And I'll say one more thing. Um, we have other younger aspirants, and other younger candidates, but they have nothing compared to show them. Because you are not just leading this country, you're going to be facing a lot of cabals. A lot of people that have all this country and so that don't want this country to move forward. A lot of all these stronger candidates, they can't face them. Mm. They're not ready to lay their life for this country. Mm. And that's the difference between Shorodea and every that's other right. people out there. We here, we are taking sacrifice. And this is just a few people out of the huge amount of diaspora um, leaders that we have on this AAC platform. But everybody's taking sacrifice. And we're ready to lay our life. I'm going to speak for myself. I'm ready to lay my life for this country because I believe so much in this country. I believe that I just right. move forward. That's right. And that is why I'm here. Hmm. I left a lot where I'm coming from just to be here today to support my country, to support Shore, to support the African race, to support the black race. And I'm going to say this one more time before I go. Help is on the way. Okay. For those Nigerians that believe that after this election, I want to go on. Please, just stay back. And just let's just watch how we're going to turn things around. Nigeria is going to move forward. I believe so, and I want you to believe so too. Thank you. Quite an infectious passion about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I mean, let, let me go to um, our dear friend uh, from South Africa. Uh, maybe a little anecdote from your personal experience, which you read the last time when he talked about the airports in Ghana. You had an experience when you were with Shore, uh trying to take pictures here at the local airport, the commotion, the crisis. I mean, what, what does that tell you? I mean, how did you feel when you saw those happening? Okay, thank you. Um, first and foremost, um, I appreciate um, Dr. Malcolm. And secondly, I want to appreciate the family of Shore for allowing him to run this race, to put his life down for his great country because anything you are doing in life if you are good out there if your family doesn't support you when you look back you know that feeling will come where i'm coming from what's happening there. so um we really appreciate that i want to start by saying this nigerians all people seated here they believe in a man from different parts of the world you should tell Nigeria something that this is a credible person that has been tested, trusted, and people believe in. I won't say that. You see, a lot of people that doesn't know Shore, when they hear him talk, there is a way you will read person psychologically. And you will mean that you will see that this person is talking from the bottom of his heart. There is something burning in him. So people say that it's rude. It's not rude. It's rude for people that deserve it. When you see him talking, if you deserve your respect, you will see someone that is so humble. But he can't withstand. People that pretend, thinking, oppressing people, thinking that they are helping people, but they are busy deceiving them. It can't be standard. And that's why you see the support that EAC is getting is increasing on a daily basis. He just came back from Mundo. Immediately, people hear him talking from Akure. All those market women just know that what they've seen in this man, this is the kind of person that they want. Without us doing much of talk, people are tired. And that's why you see the massive support that we are getting. Even some of them that are even asking for money, immediately we tell them that this is not a party that will give money. 
they get it straight. As because of that alone, a lot of them say that these are the right people that mean business for this country. Because those people that have been coming to them, they've been deceiving them. So coming to your question of how does people feel taking pictures, you see, success attracts a lot of people. When people are seeing you that this success coming and your name is success, it attracts unless you are a windshield. <laughs> like some of the leaders that we have. Some of them have gone into things that they don't longer have human feelings. That's what I see. That's what we see. Because I can't imagine in your own family, you see how they are living, but your neighbor, you see them dying. You don't feel concerned. They are devil incarnate. They see things happening. And they know they are the cause of all this uh, disaster that is happening in the country. But they don't have the pains anymore. So what I'm telling Nigerians is that this is the right time. See yourself as part of the historical change that is going to happen in Nigeria. And it's happening in Nigeria, it's happening in the continent. And as it's happening in the continent of Africa, it's spreading to the whole world. No world can do, no country can do without Nigerians. They should get it straight. Anywhere we are, we make the difference. Irrespective of what our leader is doing to us, we still find a midway. Nigerians, all the people gathering here, it's not about them, it's about you. They've got their lives. Wherever they are, they are successful by His grace. But these are people that have feelings for this country. They can't continue with what God has done for them just to be comfortable in their zone. They all came out from their comfort zone. Some left their business. All of us left their families. We left everything for this great country. Please and please, God will not come from heaven. Is going to send people because as our pastor have said when god wants to liberate the israelites he sent moses today at that stage they don't know some of them are even crucifying moses so we see ourselves that the way the passion is burning in us and god is it in our hearts that we should be part of this historical change Thank you. Fantastic. Finally, do you feel that Omoye Elishore has what it takes to be the president of this country? Wow, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for asking me. Uh, it was a very, it's, it's going to be a very tough hat to follow all these acts for me. Uh, in summarization, they've also reflected how I feel. Um, for me, it was a no-brainer. Uh, don't let the accent fool you. Um, I'm fully Nigerian, very proud Nigerian, and I care about our people. Been into the States for a long time. Before I met Shore, I met many Nigerians. Uh, a lot of them pissed off at uh, how our country is. Uh, some of us walk away, and some of us are really passionate about what are we going to do about it. Uh, again, let me thank Malcolm for his wisdom. Um, not to brag, everything I touch is gold. I'm a perfectionist by nature. If I'm a part of this group, this wonderful people here, the people that know me, that, that know me well, know there's something going on. As they watch me, they was like, wow, so if BJ is a part of this group, they know much about this group. Over time, growing up, I came to this country when I was really young. Uh, I think 10 years old. I remember when the lights went out in my father's house. I was like, wow, daddy, what happened here? He was like, he laughed. He was like, oh, you know, maintenance. You know, they're doing maintenance. You know, he didn't want to tell us, you know, this is how it's going to be. So over, <laughs> over time, 
We realized where we were. Um, I was uh, a spectator of many presidents. You know, we talk about Shiru Shagari, Babangida, you know, Buhari, you know, Abacha, all of them. I mean, I got to experience a couple of them while I was here. And wow, coming from America, it was a shock to understand that, you know, in this part of the world, things are done differently. You know, no codes of conduct, you know, discipline. And these are all the things that you need, that a nation needs to, you know, be a nation. So I'll tell you this, being in America for a while, my line of duty, I'm an engineer by trade. Uh, in my line of duty, um, I work in Washington, D.C., you know, close to the White House. And I'm involved in a lot of projects that, you know, I can't talk about. But I'll tell you this, they discussed, you know, the people here, the talent that we have in Nigeria. I mean, the Nigerian people, whether they studied here or they studied abroad. I mean, sometimes I just sit down and I'm shocked, the people that I meet. And when I finally realize they're brothers and sisters, um, sometimes it brings tears to my eyes that, wow, look how talented we are. If we take this talent back <coughs> home, America will be afraid. Mm, yes. Yeah, also right. Russia, you know, the <coughs> superpowers, China. We have so much talent that even the Americans realize that, wow, Nigerians have a lot to do with La Kalama. And these are people that we want to keep. And they will do anything to make you keep that uh, blue passport. But it takes people like us that know that these are our roots. I care about my people and I'll do anything for them. Going back to uh, who sure is, sure when I met him, wow, I was uh, blown away at the uh, vision, you know, the, uh, you know, the audacity to, you know, have this vision to accomplish what we're about to accomplish. And don't get me wrong, Nigeria is very much in play. I believe this is going to happen. This is the right time. This is the most important time to be a Nigerian. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> I would really love to take everybody to come, but yeah. we'll be right. right back after this uh, should break. Uh, then we'll be able to see our final words and what we want from Nigerians as they go to the polls on the 16th of February. We'll be right back. The TV that overfed ruling class did not only create wealth for the minority, dear friends, crudies, and stalwarts, and hunger for the majority, but also created a people who see themselves as hungry Yorubas, hungry Igbos, hungry Aousas. The seeds have succeeded in creating hungry pastors and hungry imams. All this in the bid to crush the resistance by the hungry people. We shall be free the day we realize that there are only hungry Nigerians. Take it back, action! Again, speaking with Nigerians and diaspora who had arrived in Nigeria and had to vote in the February 16, 2019 presidential elections. And we've been having a lot of discussions on their thoughts on what they expect from Nigerians. Finally, friends, if I may ask you, if there is one message you want to pass across to Nigerian voters and the electorates, what will that message be? Let's start with you, Pastor. Fellow Nigerians, it is madness to continue to do the same thing and expect the same result, a different result. Mm. We've had the same people for over two decades. They just changed their party, they are the same people. It's time for another person. So I can assure you a vote for Shumure will not be a waste. Thank you. Mm. So fellow Nigerians, um, this is our revolution. Um, we all knew about the revolution that took place in the, in the uh, the Arab Spring. This is our our, our Nigerian Spring. Uh, this is a time for us to take our common destiny into our hands. Uh, now is not the time for us to start pointing fingers. 
we need to know that the, the, the change that we envisage for must start with us. And we also not need to know that the, the, the power in the people is greater than the people in power. Mm. Thank you. Adela. Dear Nigerians, I want you all to look at Nigeria as a company. In every company in the world, I think there's a research that says you have to change leaders at least every, every decade to inject fresh ideas to take a company to the next level. These people have been around. They're the same set of people for 58 years. But you know what? Their time is up. With this, your thumbprint, you can keep them out of power. And I want you all to really do that. Come February 16th print them out of our destiny. Yes. And let's create right. a new one for ourselves. That's right. Great. Amen. Daisy. Yes. They say uh, the leadership is a reflection of the follower. So Nigerians are smart people. The reflection of the leadership that we currently have is not the true reflection of the people in Nigeria. So there's a white saying that they say, if the wise refuse to rule, they will suffer the rules of the idiots. Thank you. Great. Ogubwa. <laughs> Nigerian people. <laughs> <laughs> so Jaco, so Jaco, so Jaco, so Jaco. The reason for our so far, it don't they show him face to us. If I don't talk, oh, they show next second come come talk. If I don't hear, oh my, if I catch you, that's your problem. That's right. Hold on. So uh, I have two things to say. <laughs> to Nigerians living in Nigeria, help is on the way. Help is on the way. That's right. This is time to take our freedom back. This is time to take back our resources. This is time to take back our economy. This is time to take back our life. Our wicked leaders have taken our life from us. They have stripped us naked. Yeah. We are dying. And it's time for us to take back our country. And that is why you and I must take it back. And for Nigerians living outside Nigeria, make a get ready. You are coming back home. Yes. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Paris. Nigerians is an error to be lacking in the midst of plenty. Hmm. Nigeria is full of abundant blessings. That's why they say it's a country that's full of honey. Where is our honey today? <laughs> it's right time. To allow that only to flow, I mean to flow again in Nigeria. Use your right hand finger, put it in the ink, and put it on AAC. Number three. Number three, Number three on the ballot. It will make the only to flow again. Yes, yes. Right. right. Pious question. Nigerians, I'm begging you people, please. <laughs> <laughs> so much. I'm not a big fan of Donald Trump, but I have to say this. Donald Trump said, so What you got to do is. We have tried our leaders, our old leaders, they try all they can offer. They, can, they don't have nothing to offer to us no more. We don't have nothing. Let's try Shore and I believe with Shore this country will turn to a better country. Please, Nigerians, please, when you go on Saturday to cast your votes, we are number three on the ballot papers. And that will be the biggest, better gift you can give to Shore. Please vote Shore on Wednesday, AAC. Great. Darish. My Niger people. Yes. So I salute you. Mama, Papa, Brother, Sister, Auntie, Piki. I did reach out to you. Don't sleep, oh. Mm. The final answer to our VG. Prayer. This, that. It don't come. It did your hand. On the 16th of February, wake up early. If you like, no bath. You don't, it's not even necessary. Just go out there with your PVC. Don't forget. Take your PVC and go there to cast your vote. Right. Vote African Action Congress. Right. AAC. You That's see the symbol. Right. Once you see it, put out there. That's right. Right. That is the answer. That's no, sir. Great. That's so Let's see. All right. Um, <laughs> we all know there is a direct connection between your vote and your destiny. Mm. We are more than them. There is no fear. Uh, this is a time that the power has truly come back to the people. When you disenfranchise yourself by not voting or by voting for the wrong people, you use the power wrongly. 
So go ahead and vote for AAC. Vote for the African Action Congress and see our destiny turn out for the better. Thank Great. you. That's summary as well. Nigerians, uh, I cannot stress enough. As I said, this is the most important time to be a Nigerian in our lifetime. This generation right here, I'm not gonna blame our parents for not doing what we're about to do right now. But we've taken that uh, opportunity away from them and we plan to represent and help our people. And we wanna set everybody free and have a better life from now on. Great. Oh. Finally. Fellow Nigerians, I am sure if I wake you up from your slumber and ask you to name the problems of Nigeria, one of the things she would say is corruption. Yes, it's real. When you hear our politicians say, if I open my mouth, things will blow, it's true. Most of our misrepresentants and maladministrators are compromised. This is why they can't offer you anything positive. This is why the change is not happening. We have a lot of people contesting in this election. Some of them very young, some of them old, some of them unaware, and some of them just maybe not there. If you want to know what a man will do when everybody is looking, you need to see and find out what that man was doing when nobody was looking. That's right. Omo Yele Shogore has been there for almost 30 years. He's been tested, he's been tempted, and he's been otherwise brutalized. Please, the fact that Omoyele Shogore is still standing uncompromised, unblemished, is a good testament and a validation and an answer to your question of whom should I cast my vote for who is not colored. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, my last question actually goes to. Dr. Malcolm, this <laughs> 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 is the take it back movement. DJ, 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 the only DJ that counts. <laughs> that guru of take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Malcolm, okay. one of the biggest threat to the election has to do with vote pying because of the level of poverty in the land. What is your movement going to do about that? You can also add, also, your final thoughts to Nigeria as far as February 16 is concerned. Sure, I, I think the first thing I'll do before answering that question is to thank every single person on this stage. They are a very small part of a massive movement. Um, They've been, the truth of the matter is there is absolutely no way we could have gotten where we are without the silent, behind the scenes support. So there are a number of us you've seen. Nigerians have had the rare privilege of actually seeing more of the faces behind the actions and activities taking place. So I just want to thank everybody here for your sacrifice and thank all of those that are in diaspora and as well as all of the supporters on the ground. We don't see ourselves within the movement as diaspora, Nigeria, absolutely not. All of us are one single movement. Um, so we just want to thank everybody for that. Vote by. Here are some thoughts. So the first one is, will money exchange hands on Saturday? The answer is absolutely yes, it will. Um, two thoughts. Number one. In 2015, it was not the party that spent the most money that won. So there's a limit to where money goes. Right. And in right. fact, it's a, it's a, we tell ourselves this within the campaign, that That's when right. you see a PDP rally or an APC rally, 20,000 people, the going rate is 5,000 naira per person. That's 100 million naira. That's how much money we've actually run this campaign with. Now, what we don't count in that money is are things like the sacrifices of each of these people that you see here. 
There's so, if we were paying money for their time, <laughs> this campaign would not be possible. Yes. yes. So the truth of the matter is that on the 16th, money will exchange hands. That's the way, the only way the establishment knows how to play politics. But here's what we we'll tell them. Their money is going to go to waste. Mm -hmm. for That's right. Reasons. Yes. That's right. So here is what we ask Nigerians to do. The only people that can secure the elections are the Nigerian people themselves. Mm -hmm. yes. Part of the reason why the APC won in 2015 was because credible platforms helped to prevent the elections from being rigged. So we want Nigerians to do two things. And then we also remember what happened in Oshu and Ekiti. Money exchange hands and INEC claimed that there was nothing they could do because they had no evidence. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to help provide them with evidence. evidence. That's right. And number two, we're going to help secure the votes. So what we've asked people to do is we have an app. We're not just a digital party verbal. We actually we, we, we take action. And so we've taken action. And the action we've taken is we have an app. So anybody with a smartphone, go on Google, uh, Google Play, just that. It's an Android app. It's called AAC Take It Back. You don't have to be a member of our party. You don't have to be a member of our movement. If you are going to be at the election ground, download that app. That app allows you to record the results of the election. It also allows you to take pictures. And as soon as you hit send, it comes into our situation room. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be following this election in real time. We're going to be getting results from the polling stations. We're going to be getting not only the results of the election, but situation results as well, including pictures. If somebody offers you money, we're not going to tell Nigerians to turn it down. It's their money. Take it. Just take the money. Record, make sure that transaction is recorded. And so when INET tells us they didn't see the APC doing anything, we will provide them with that evidence. If they tell us they didn't see the PDP doing it, we will provide them with that evidence. But the final reminder to Nigerians is our destiny is in our hands. And I, I am absolutely convinced, based on all the things we've seen, that Nigerians are ready. We are absolutely ready. And for those who say things are impossible, you know, somebody... Many years ago, people thought a minority president was impossible. That if you were not Hausa Ibo or Yoruba, you couldn't win right. on a ticket. Guess what? We saw that in 2011. Yeah, yeah. We've never seen an opposition party win an election since this nation was established. We saw that in 2015. In 2019, we will see another impossibility yes. become possible. Yes. When Nigerians go to the polls and vote on Moye Lisho so, right. as the next president of the Federal Republic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.